Thank you, Father. You organized this conference for your children. Yes. You want us to be one, to be united. Otherwise, we can't be in the same kingdom. A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Lord Jesus, you have given to Holiness Revival Movement this assignment to unite the church worldwide. And we are seeing that you are working with us. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, we pray. We are welcoming you with the message, God's message to the remnant that sigh for righteousness in the church. God's message to the remnant that sigh for righteousness in the church. The remnant are crying to God, desiring righteousness in the church. In Romans chapter 11, verse 2, to verse 5. Romans chapter 11 verse 2 to verse 5. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture said of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and digged down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what said the answer of God? Unto him I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. At this present time also, There is a remnant according to the election of grace. We are talking about remnant because the major population have gone into decay. The major population, majority of the people have been defeated and not standing again. But there is a remnant. That's why we are saying in this conference, God is speaking to the remnant of his people that remain. It was hard in the days of Elijah when Israel rose up against the people of God, the prophets, the righteous ones, and killed them. Elijah said, they have killed everybody, remaining only I, and yet they are seeking me to kill me. They are seeking after me, which tells you the situation at that time, that it was hard time. The people hated God. They preferred the worship of Baal and other gods. They hated the truth. 
They killed the prophets of truth, preachers of truth. God told Elijah, I have hid 7,000 people. They are so hidden away from people away from the violent people. Why? Their sight was repugnant. People hated seeing them. Why? They were preaching the truth. They were telling people the truth and bringing condemnation upon them. So, Elijah considered himself the only surviving remnant the Lord said, no, you are up to 7,000. 7,000 that I have preserved. Well, untrue. The situation is such that we feel we are the only ones. All have gone. But the Lord is saying, there are some that I have preserved by my power you may not see them people may not know them because I hid them so they may not be killed see you exposed and everybody is dealing with you I have more now we want to believe you who have come here you are one of the remnants among the people that remain after the corruption of the church of Christ in this present generation. A remnant refers to the people that remain in the church in righteousness in this backsliding and apostate generation. Who saw because righteousness is wiping out from the church. They are crying. God, righteousness is going away. Righteousness is going away from the church, from my society, from the nation, and from the whole world. Look at it in the book of Psalm, Psalm 12. You see the same cry concerning the decay of righteousness the disappearance of righteousness psalm 12 verse 1 and 2 help lord for the godly man seized for the faithful fell from among the children of men can you see this man is crying to god is sighing is praying and say god help the godly man it's disappearing. It's difficult to find a godly man. There are many pastors, but to find a godly pastor is not easy. There are many called bishops, but to find a godly bishop is not easy. Many are called, going by the calling of prophets, but to find a godly prophet is not easy. Many are overseers, general overseers, general superintendent, general all. But to find a godly person is not easy. The psalmist here is saying, help us, O Lord, for the godly man, Caesar, we can't find them. For the faithful fell from among the children of men. Where will you find faithful people? Where will you find faithful people? People that will keep their virginity. People that will overcome the love of money. People that will not tell lies. People that are true and sincere. People that have not mingled with the devil. With mysticism. Where will you find them? They are wiping out from among the sons of men. He said, they speak vanity. Everyone with his neighbor. They are not dealing truly. 
they're not dealing sincerely even the pastors are not dealing sincerely in their churches with their members the testimonies they're giving are not original testimonies many of those things don't happen they just say them to capture the people hell they speak vanity everyone with his neighbor with flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak double heart one is for themselves another one oh it's for god they mix it to just to deceive the people oh lord help this is the cry of the righteous man it is the cry of the righteous woman that godliness is disappearing among men among women do you see women dressing well among the youths do you see them dressing well in among the students do you see them in primary school secondary school dressing well they are following the dictates of the government the dictates of the spirit of the air that controls the society so this matter is paining the godly the battle against the church the church has faced battle and is facing battle great war great war this battle comes from satan the arch enemy he's the one fighting and he's winning some people he's achieving it the fall of many is winning them uh, the bible says the thief comes not but for to steal to kill and to destroy can you see he's killing is stealing stealing away good property that you belong that which you have which god says to all hold fast the devil is stealing them off from them hold fast that which you have he's killing people overturning the fate of people overturning the fate of people is killing them is destroying them many are going to hell have gone already others are on their way going destroying them that is what this arch enemy is doing against the church the battle is strong battle yes the battle comes on the leader or leadership of the church the superintendents the overseers the church founders the ministry founders the leading pastor whatever title the ones that are on top this battle is against them strike the chef out what will happen to the sheep the sheep will scatter. So, Satan has faced many top men and cleared them off. As they are now, both they and their sheep are no more under God. Many of them, they are not under God. They are not in the kingdom of God. Satan has carried them away. And the unfortunate thing is, it is the majority. Look at how he did it in the book of First Kings, chapter 12. First Kings, chapter 12, verse 26 to 32. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David, God brought Jeroboam to take over the kingdom of Israel. He prophesied that he would use him. 
But when he came, he saw the thing in the flesh. The prophecy fulfilled itself. The Lord only really gave a kingdom to, the, to Jeroboam. But see what he said here. Two portions of the 12 tribes rested in the hand of Judah. And he had 10 tribes under his control. But see how Satan attacks these people. These leaders. These top men. In verse 26. And Jeroboam said in his heart. He didn't know it was Satan speaking to his heart. He didn't know. You must be careful. Some voices come to you. You think they are from God. Could Jeroboam have received this voice from God? Not at all. But look at it. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If these people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of these people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehob Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Do you now see here, it was now himself that was vital in the call of God. It was himself that was vital in the work of the ministry. It was himself. It, it is not God to be served. It is not God the people should be directed to. It is himself. Now he said, God has ordained that worship of God should be done in Jerusalem. Now, Rehoboam remains the king over Judah and Jerusalem. And he had the ten tribes with him. His fear was, if I allow them to always go to Jerusalem to worship, Rehoboam will settle with them. And they will kill me. Can you see? But God gave you the calling. Cannot God protect your calling? God gave you the ministry. Cannot God give you the people? But see carnal man. Carnal mind of the carnal man. So with this thought Satan brought to him, it's an attack. It's an attack. Many ministers have been attacked in one way or the other by the devil to turn off from God. Many. Many. He, he, is now, he has now been killed as a servant of God. His spirit has become dead. So what did he do now? Whereupon, verse 28, the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold, thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. Something with human being. As you see them in the cathedral, many don't know God. Many, their hearts are not with God. Their hearts rest upon their preacher. Rest upon their bishop. Many don't read the Bible by themselves. Many don't make effort to go to conferences. If they go, it's healing they're looking for. Some of these women will lie down and be sleeping and say, when they are praying, wake me up. Wake me up at the time of prayer. Because she came for miracle, not for the word of God. So they don't know God. So they raised upon their leader. And whatever their leader tells them, that they will do. See, Jeroboam. Yes. See what he did. After he molded an, an image of gold. He put one in Bethel, another one in Dan, 
and told the people, Why must you go all the way to Jerusalem? The journey is too far for you. Now, there is God which I have provided so near in Bethel and the other one in Dan for those who are in far places. What does the scripture say? The Bible says, verse 30, And this thing became a sin. For the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. And he made an house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people which were not of the sons of Levi. Can you see what has been done? And this human being who have been serving God all this while, who have enjoyed the, the service of God, the reign of God in the days of David, all the 40 years of David, the godly man, have you not learned the worship of God? Have you not come to know that God is not a man that to, he should be worshipped with him? What happened to you is still the battle. So Satan conquered Jeroboam and now see, he turned the people away. That's exactly it. How Satan now reaches out to some bishops. Are you not the founder of the church? Are you not the founder of the ministry? Are you not the senior pastor? Are you not the overseer? Are you not the superintendent? Tell them this thing. Tell them. They will believe you. They will accept. Tell them the type of money you want from them. Tell them how to give the money. They will give you. Tell them the doctrine you, you want to give to them. Tell them that these things are not necessary. That it is not. Misinterpret scripture for them. And they do so. Satan attacked the leaders. And now they have laid the church under them from God. That's why you find these churches that are wearing trousers. They don't bother these women wearing trousers there. They preach and confirm it. The ones palming their hair, they preach and confirm it. The ones marrying two wives, they preach and confirm it. So they have gone. The godly man Caesar. The righteous fell from among the sons of men. It is remnant, a few that remains in the church worldwide that are still holding to the truth. Even among these few, Satan is still winning. Satan is still winning. That's the situation. That's the state. He conquers the leaders. And when you have stricken the sheep, the, the shepherd, the sheep will follow. The sheep will scatter. The church of God is scattered. The church of God is now scattered. They are not one. They are not united. Every preacher, every leader with their doctrines, go to the Baptists. They teach what the equa don't teach. Some things vary. Go to the living faith. They teach what some things vary from what redeem is teaching. Go to deeper life. They teach some things which watchman will not teach. Go to this. So the things look every man as he sees fit. If the man sees it very well, good luck to you, the members. If he does not see it very well, they are gone. All of them are moving to hell. All of them. Come, all those people that are serving under Rehoboam, are there people that will go to heaven there? No. So, these overseers that have moved off from God by the devil, none of their members will make it to heaven. Except, as the scripture tells us, there were some that, a few, a remnant, that refused the idolatrous worship of Jeroboam. They were still coming to Jerusalem. And they were persecuted. Some moved out and went to stay in Judah. Just for God. And it is few of them. 
So this is the situation we find ourselves in our day. Again, Satan is also fighting on the elders. The leader, the elders. To turn them off. To make them attack the wall. It was one of the kings of Israel that started very well. And after the death of Zechariah, who was mentoring him, the elders of the land, after the death of Jehoiada, the elders of the land came to him and said, let's go and serve other gods. There's more reward. We will bring in more development to our land. He agreed. They put off God and went to other gods. Which means these elders were not righteous elders. They were not looking for God. It's all self-glory they were looking for. Promote me. The king soul type of life. Yes, I have seen, but promote me. They are looking for glory. And again, in the book of Numbers chapter 16, I read from verse 1. Numbers chapter 16, verse 1. To verse 4. Now, Korah, the son of Ezra, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dotan, and Dotan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. We are for then, lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. Rebellion coming from Korah, Datan, and the sons of Reuben. They took two hundred, they raised up 250 noble people in the congregation to challenge Moses and Aaron. Where well, you are children of one man and you just came and occupied this position and are directing us in everything. Come, who told you that you are the only one that know how to do it? The, all of us here, we know how to do it. But you carry everything. You carry the leadership. Aaron, carry the priesthood. No. We will not take it. You want to rule us. You brought us from Egypt just to rule us. Come. Look at these people. Who, at, who, who, who attacked them? Satan attacked them. When Moses came from wilderness to Egypt, did he not say the Lord appeared to him? Did he not call the elders of, of Israel in Egypt? together with Aaron, and demonstrated the signs of the Lord? What about the signs in Egypt? The mighty power? What about what God spoke through Moses? Kai, what about Mount Sinai that shook by the presence of God with burning fire? They never saw it. Satan never allowed them to be moved by those things. We, they, we should do it. It is the flesh. The work of God is not more by God, not more by divine appointment. It's by some intelligence. It's by the favor of men. It's by what people are saying. People are saying, you are the one. Why is this man taking it over? You can do it better. So that is how Satan twists them. That is exactly what Satan is doing now. He has attacked the elders 
So, if somebody is coming up well in a church, Satan will tell him to go and start his own. This man is not doing it well. This man is not allowing you to, 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 uh, uh, to demonstrate your, your power, the, your inherent power, authority, and gifts that God has given to you. The man is blocking you. Don't you see the man blocking you? Go and start your own. And that is how the church of God is splitting. That is it. How the church of God is splitting. And that is how politics comes into the church. As he's, go, he's planning to go, he's politicizing like Satan in heaven to get some people for himself because they're going away. Is God the one calling him? No. He's not called by God. His mind is calling him. Oh, some ambitions of life. I will make money. This man is making money. I want to make money. So, various things have come in to scatter the church. The church is not together. I'm telling you, righteousness is affected. Dotan, Korah, are they righteous? Were they righteous? Never. Now, they want to take over government. They want to take over higher service. Carnal mean taking over higher service that requires the choice of God, that requires anointing of God. If they now take over higher service, where would they lead the people to? Hell. Hell. And the people too are are cheaply available, ready to follow. Men and women, ready to follow and go and perish. That is the problem of the church now. The situation of the church is a bad thing. Help, Lord, the godly man seized. The faithful fell from among the sons of men. That's why we talk about the people that sigh. The people that are crying, I'm one of them. The righteous belong to this class because they see how the church of God has spoiled. How leaders have carried the church away, have scattered the church. Maybe because of money, because of prestige, because of fame, because of other things. You see, again, Satan also fights the members of the church to still kill and destroy. He fights them to scatter the church, to cause the church to die. Even members that are in the church in the book of Isaiah chapter 30. I read verse 8 to verse 11. Isaiah Chapter 30, verse 8 to verse 11. Now, go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us small things. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. These are members of the church that are walking on the pastor to cause the pastor to backslide. They are laying preacher upon the pastor and this pastor feared God this pastor their own pastor loved God their own pastor served God but see them they say we don't want the word of God we don't want this thing that you're always shouting on us <laughs> you're always shouting you're always preaching ah, don't wear trousers to the church uh, don't do this. Don't paint your face. Uh, don't do attachment. We don't want again. Um, they are frank about it. Frank. 
as I said, somebody was saying in Lagos, he was invited by one Anglican church there to preach, since he was a member of that church. He gave them sound word, being a member of Holiness of our Movement. He preached a sound doctrine. And the pastor became angry. And the elders, they gathered together and called him. Why did you preach this type of thing here? Uh -uh. He said, this is the word of God. This is what God expects them to do. For them to live righteously and go to heaven. One of the elders there said, who told you that everybody that is here is here for heaven? That is true. It's not for heaven. So they are resisting. These members that are not for heaven, they are married to two wives. They have concubines. They have money too. They have money. They have come to the church, not for heaven. It's a social thing because how would they be asking him, which church do you go to and you don't have a church? That's a shame. He must belong to a church. But then I came here and you are too serious about God. What makes you too serious, Pastor? You are looking for money. I give you a jib. What are you looking for again? Stop those things. Your disturbing conscience. You will make your members go away and you won't have offering again. I will leave this church. The Bible says these children, corrupt children, they have affected the church. That they are a rebellious people. They won't do the word they are, you are preaching. People, lying children. Children that will not hear the law of the law. Teach it anyhow. Teach it with all strength. They are not interested. And in fact, who say to the seers, to the prophets that the Lord give the message? See not, don't receive any message from God. If God is speaking, say he should go and tell another person. Tell God that your own people say no, they don't want that message again. Tell God. Your own people are saying no. Yes. Who say to the seer, see not. And to the prophets, they say, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us small things. In fact, tell us lies. Prophesy deceit. We want to laugh. Our church should be for laughing, for relaxation. You're making people tense. You're terrifying us with hellfire. If you do like this, we'll go to hell. You are terrifying us with hellfire. You're not giving us peace. Pastor, stop it. This is what they are doing. Are they doing like that? Yes. That is what they're doing. And killing the church. And truly, some pastors give up. Only very few pastors remain in the world now. Very, very few. Others have given up. If you ask them, what happened? You say, my members are no more interested. My members are not interested. Pastor, why are you not preaching this? It's, the people will not take it. So, I am giving them what they will like. Otherwise, how do I pay my children's school fees? That is the church. Should God, who planted the church, reap nothing? Should Christ, who died for the church, receive nothing? Should the Holy Ghost, who is moving up and down as the principal person in the church of Christ in the world, convert no one? That is the situation. That's where we are. It's paining us. We are crying. When we look around the churches, we look around the society, we look around the nation, we look across to other places. In fact, we see that Nigeria is the most spiritual nation in the world. The one, Nigeria should have the highest number of Christians in the world. Nigeria should have the highest number of churches in the world. Nigeria should have the highest number of preachers in the world. But where are the righteous people? And if it is so, even in Nigeria, then what about our neighboring countries? What about America? Okay, what about Asia? What about India? That the percentage of Christianity is 3%. 
they are struggling between three to five uh, to, to seven percent but they say no it's still three it's three percent three percent which means out of every hundred three people are christians out of every one thousand how many people then 30 people out of every uh, million 300 people for out of a million out of a billion and yet they are 1.3 or 1.5 billion people what about that where is then christianity what has god done do you understand where we cry what has happened who is for God? Who? When Aaron made a molten, a molten image to go back to Egypt, it was like everybody was ready to go back to Egypt. And they were going back with dancing with all the miracles of God. And Moses came and stood behind the, outside the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Come here. Only 300 out of six million people what happened to human beings that they're not interested in god that they don't love him what happened what happened a remnant is it shall be saved and we are the remnant the lord will speak to us the lord wants to talk to us yes that is what we need to understand very very important the battle against the church is strategic battle against the minister satanic battle battle against the elders battle against the members see the battle set against job and all he had in the book of job in job chapter 1 verse 13 to 22. Job chapter 1 verse 13. And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yeah, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Can you see? All your servants have been killed that were plowing in your farm. With the other cows that were feeding beside. All the cows were carried. All the shepherds over those cows were killed. I was the only one that escaped. I'm saying the battle against the righteous man is strong. And this battle is systematically aiming at the general overseer to make him give up righteousness. To make him curse God. This battle is systematic rising up against the church elders to bring various confusion and split them so that the church will not be in peace there should be a separation assemblies of god today is an example there is a separation battle of the devil battle of the devil again look at it in verse 16 while he was yet speaking there came also another and said, The fire of God is falling from heaven and had burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell the... Maybe he, he will say he went to the town to buy something for the servants. When he was coming, he saw the fire descend and all his colleagues were burned. All these colleagues were born. The sheep burned 
destroyed. I escaped. And he said it's the fire of God. Calling the name of God. Making you to blame God. Making you to hate God. And think that it is God doing this evil. So that your heart should weaken. Your grip on God should weaken. You leave him. It's God that has refuses for you to marry. It's God that refuses to give you a child. It's God that refuses to give you money. It's God that is doing, putting this sickness and refuses to heal it. So that you become angry with him. And backslide. That is the battle. Systematic. Against the church. The devil has done so much. Again, in verse 17. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yeah, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the, of the house. And it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. What for? Brother, pastor, what are these forces working? What do they want to achieve in your life? Backsliding. Turn away from righteousness. Money is not there to pay school fees. See, they have driven your children from school. Driven them. And your children are saying, look at him. Instead of looking for another word, he said he will be pastor. Pastor. Are we going to eat pastor now? They have driven me from school. And my friends are laughing at me. I told them my father doesn't have money because he's a pastor. They laugh. This is eating into you. For you to backslide. For you to live off righteousness. And start preaching the message of these other people. The message of these other bishops. And you join the prosperity people. And start telling lies. And start acting lies. That is the aim. So that righteousness should not exist. Help Lord. For the godly man Caesar. The faithful. Have turned off. They have failed. From among the sons of men. That's the cry. The sighing of the righteous few. That are still there. In the world. But see. Then verse 20. Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return, Tita. The Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Come. Was it the commitment of one day that brought Job to this state of determination and righteousness? That man has been known for righteousness. See what the Bible says of him. In Job chapter 1, from verse 1 to verse 3. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that feared God. And extuate evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep, and three thousand camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred she asses, and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. The most righteous among them, the most the richest among them. Most righteous. This man trained himself in righteousness. Such that when Satan did all these things, he did not fall. Why? The Bible says, He that hears my word and does them, 
I will liken him to a man that builds his house upon the rock. The rain descended. The winds blew. And the flood came and hit at that house. It did not fall because it was sounded upon the rock. This is your lazy Christianity. How will you stand the devil? When the evil day comes, how will you stand the devil? This is your prayerless Christianity. How will you stand the devil? Do you even read? When you go to preach, how do you preach? You say, God, I'm going to preach. I'm going to open the Bible. When I open the Bible, direct my eyes to where I will preach. Is that not your ministry? Can you do this type of thing and, and overcome the, the evil day? Overcome the evil day. When the truth is given to you, you reject and argue against it. How will you overcome the evil day that refuse to eat strong meat? You cannot do restitution. If common erring, remove common erring, you will not do it. Preach against palming, you will not do it. How will you stand? It's God that makes a person stand. Look at it in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. The Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins, guide about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith where will ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all sins now are you doing this or you think when the evil day comes you will stand when the evil day comes, you will stand. Samson. Samson. You were not committed to righteousness. You were immoral. You spend your time in immorality. With harlots. With Delilah. And you think you will stand when the Philistines gather upon you. When your evil day comes, the Lord will remove his hand. Samson, Samson. The Philistines are upon you. I will rise as at the other time. Yes. And I will scatter them. But the spirit had left him. Wow. You are into sin. You are into sin. I will not the devil carry you. Peter. Simon. Simon. You watch with me. At least one hour in prayer. Watch and pray. That ye may not enter into temptation. Watch and pray. That you may not enter into temptation. Temptation is coming tomorrow. Temptation higher than your strength is coming tomorrow. Temptation to end up your Christian life is coming tomorrow. Temptation to demote you is coming tomorrow. Yes. And yet, he will not pray. The Lord says, This night, you people will run away from me. Peter said, What? Not me. Even if everybody shall run away, not me. And Jesus has said, listen to me. Before the cock crows, you have denied me three times. Eh? What I say? It will never happen. Simon, Satan has desired to have you. To sift you as wheat. The, Satan is aware of your gift. He's aware of your intelligence. Of your talent. is aware of your performance. 
If he's aware of your anointing, he wants to cause that thing to stop. He wants that by tomorrow, it doesn't work again. Yes, it will not work again. This is your clean chin. Satan wants to put heavy beard there. That when tomorrow they see you, oh, they see a man full of beer. You won't see him again. This is your life. Satan wants to fill you with some things. This alcohol you're not drinking. Satan wants you to come and drink it. But Jesus said, pray. Watch and pray. But you're not praying. That is where the people are dying. That is why when Satan pushes you, just fall. Because you're not, commit, you're not committed. You're not godly. You're not pursuing righteousness. You're not reading your Bible. You're not listening to tapes. You're not carrying books to study. That is where you're dying. The godly man sees it. The faithful. The faithful are disappearing from among the sons of men. So, look at the case of Job. Satan went as far as taking a touch. He said, God, leave me, let me touch his body. God gave him permission. He struck him with sickness until the wife said, it's enough. What are we serving God for? What are we serving God for? Job suffered. The wife came with pressure of a woman. <laughs> it's just like when fly flew through the window and it's troubling. The <laughs> Everywhere is confused. That is how this woman was treating Job. Curse God and die. What are you waiting? Curse God and die. Me, I want to pack away. <laughs> This woman, she wants to pack away. But Job, he wanted Job to die. You can see human being. So, your wife becomes another thing to you. Your wife is to destroy you. Or it may be it's you, your husband. Just remove. So, my brethren, that is why Christianity is dead in the life of many. Dead in the life of many. Yes. Some have gone because of love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil. While some having, while some having converted after have pierced themselves with many sorrows and heartful lust. Many sorrows and some hearts in their lives. We brought nothing to this world. We carry nothing out. As somebody will say, to confirm that an evil man is dead, Bring money and shake it. That's what they're saying. Have you heard it so yourself? Can you see it now? Your ministry is for money. Bringing out games for money. Techniques for money. You, my people are wise to do evil. To do good, they don't know how to do it. It is how to make money. In the ministry, you know how to do it. But to preach righteousness... To practice righteousness, you don't know anything there. It's hard to make money. So, this is how the church went off. Some for fame, they want fame. Yes, they want fame. Some want titles. A small boy, people have been preaching for long. He started his own three months ago. And he said, my, uh, I am Apostle Jonathan. Is provoking others to envy and to wrath. What makes you an apostle? Apostle Jonathan. What makes you an apostle? But I want to be big. I want people to see me. Some, I would dress great so that they look at me and give me honor. They have left God. I'm telling you, righteousness is gone. They've gone to evil spirits now. See, who has not yet gone to evil spirits? Diverse miracles now. Deceitful miracles. Dead people rising back. Lying dead people. Negotiation of money. Lying miracle wonders. Contacting evil spirits. 
learning all arts of ministry just for money just for a name just for this god is not inside now those that sigh for righteousness there are the remnants the remaining few that are original although some of these remaining few have problems also in their lives but they see the situation is unfavorable they see the environment is unfavorable they are sighing in the church they don't know who will help them they look at their pastor they don't know who will help them bring them out they don't know who would deliver me it's like one of these evil leaders he didn't want, he knew that he cannot do this thing anymore but if i stop this who can i go to to conduct deliverance for me he looked around all the pastors we are in our call together who will serve me who will deliver me that is the situation because occultism my new water spirit has carried all the women occultism witchcraft everything now god is not there so the righteous are crying in the book of ezekiel ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4 the bible tells us ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4 and the lord said unto him go through the midst of the city through the midst of jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Abominations have been done in Jerusalem to cause the glory of the Lord to disappear. Yeah. To cause the glory of the Lord to cease. They have entered into the temple. To bring defilement. But there were a few people that saw. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Your people are gone. Your name is profaned. Go in and mark those people. For me. I will spare them in the judgment I'm bringing. So there are people who are crying. Yes, they are the remnant. Those who have kept themselves are crying. The older women who keep themselves, they speak on the road and mama. When they see the dressing of prison women on the streets, they say, oh, Women, the glory is gone. That is what they say. They're crying. The real pastors that know God, when they look at the, the, these other ones, they say, God, your church is gone. Look at what Elijah said in 1 Kings chapter 19. I read verse 9 and verse 10. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 9 and verse 10. The Bible says, And he came thither unto a curve and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said unto him, what doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, Can we read verse 10 together? One, two, go. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenants, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left and they seek my life to take it. 
can you see? They have, look at the thing he said. The children of Israel have forsaken the covenant of God. And it is touching me. I love God. I'm jealous of you. You are our God that brought us out of the land of Egypt from bondage and gave us this land. You are the creator. Lord, we have seen your power. We have seen your miracle. We have seen the victories you gave us over our enemies. But see it now. The children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They have thrown down their dying altars. Even they go to the temple and throw it down. We don't want God. Hey. We don't want God. Altars where they're burning sacrifice to God. We don't want. Destroy it. It's a precious altar. Made of gold. Destroy it. It's burning in that. It is it's, 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 it's burning that man, Elijah. Who has the love of God? Are you not feeling pain? by the church in this present time the works of the church what these ministers do in the cable network in the television what these boys do in the name of choir are you not feeling burned pain to your heart in the choir uniform of various churches are you not troubled by the way the dressing of the mama of the church Mommy, pastor's wife, see where her skirt stops. See the hair, I mean the various foreign hair introduced to them. See the wool they're carrying. Are you not born bent by the earrings of the music, the, the, the musicians of the church that wear earrings in one ear? Some of them wear short necker in the church. Is it not troubling you? Is it, a, is, is it nothing to you? It's great things to us. The collapse of the church is pain. Why did they treat my Jesus like this? Why did they treat my God like this? My creator. What did he do to them? So that's what he said. He said, they're forsaking your covenant. Yeah. They have thrown down thine altars. They have slain thy prophets with the sword. Who is telling them the truth? Who are telling them the truth? Hey, hey, hey. Hold him. Hold him. Kill him. And they practically go to kill them. By the ordering of the kings. By the order of the kings. Go and kill him. And they go and kill. And one of these kings was helped by the father, by the father of the prophet. And the son came to him. Where did two bucks lie? My father raised you up well. Why are you listening to these people? He said, oh, hold, me. hold him there. Hold him. Kill him. Ah. When he was dying, God required my blood upon you. I'm telling you, are they looking for righteous people anymore? Prophesy against these pastors and see how they will handle you. They will abuse you. They will do all. If it were not God that will stand before his... To stand up before his people. As I say, would have cleared them. They don't want righteousness. They don't want truth. Why are you discovering me? Leave me. Yes, I've chosen to perish. I've chosen hell. Is there hell by the way? That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. And they have killed all the righteous people. I only, Elijah thought he was the only one left. Elijah thought. He was the only one left. Yes. Are you there having this passion as I do? Are you there being troubled as we do? Are you there in your ministry? Trouble as holiness revival movement is troubled. For the state of the world, state of the church, that's the thing. Elijah sighed for the righteousness of God among the people of Israel. The psalmist also sighed for the revival of the law. The revival of the people of the law. Let the name of the Lord re recover. Let the word of God come back again. 
Let there be fear again in the hearts of men. Let people worship again the Lord. Let the praises of God ring again in the book of Psalm 85, verse 6 to 8. Psalm 85, verse 6 to verse 8. Will thou not revive us again? That thy people may rejoice in thee. Show us thy mercy, O Lord. And grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people. And to his sins. But let them not turn again to folly. Surely. Let them not turn again to his folly. His salvation is near them that fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. God, will you not remember your church? Will you come and meet your church like this? Everybody has gone to farm. Everybody has gone to walk. Nobody at home. The Lord comes and sees no one. The walk of iniquity. The farm of iniquity. God, will you come and meet your people like this? Can you not do something? Can you not do something? I will hear what God the Lord will speak. That's why I said God's message to the remnant that serve for righteousness. God has something to say. God has something to say. God has something to say listen preacher pay good attention for God has something to say is he not troubled himself is he not disturbed himself I have brought up children but they are forsaking me God definitely will have something to say he has something to say to you who love him, who fear him, who sigh and cry inside you because of the name of the Lord that is spoiled. Jeremiah lamented for the evil of the enemy that had happened among his people. What the enemy did against the people of God, he lamented. He cried. He said, my eyes, my eyes run down with tears. My tears have been like food to me. When I see the state of the people of God, when I see the state of the church, they dance, jump, boys and girls carry themselves and face one another, dance and turn about turn what they do in hotels. What they do in bar houses. What they do in disco houses. The church is a disco house. They dance with free conscience. Because that one is the dance to God. Polluted. They dance with their short skirt. Jumping to show their inner wear. To the man at the back. They dance bending their buttocks. And the ones behind forward their buttocks. In the house of God. My eyes are running down. My eyes are running down with tears for what the enemy has done. Look at the lamentation, chapter 1, verse 13. Lamentation, chapter 1, verse 13, and verse 16. Let's read from verse 12, rather. Is it nothing to you, all ye that pass by? Behold and see, if there be any sorrow, like unto my sorrow, which is done unto me. Is it nothing to you? You who pass by these churches, are you not seeing? You who pass by these choir people, 
Are you not seeing? Who got to where they do choir competition? Are you not seeing? Is there any sign that those ladies are born again? Is there any sign? Then why are they bring you corrupting to God? If I am my, your, if ye call me master and lord, yes I am. But if actually I'm your master and lord, will you be offering polluted things unto me? Jeroboam met priests of those that the Lord did not prescribe them to be priests. Not of the tribe of Levites. So some of these churches, the people they appoint to do things there, go and watch the way they boy, those boys bob their hair. Go and watch the way those girls dress. Go and watch the way the ushers. I had a preacher. This preacher the Lord used to speak about my ministry in 1986. So, I was thrilled. And in preaching, he could quote scriptures, many. That's right, about, right back in the university days. So, uh, after the university, I was, already, I was walking. One time I was in Lagos. I was passing by somewhere and saw the advertisement and the publicity that the man was coming to Lagos to preach in a program. I said, fine, I will go to this man and listen to him again. I enjoyed him. I remember how many years ago the Lord used him to speak about my ministry. I saw him. I said I was the one you were speaking to. Now, when we, were, we entered the church with a brother, I saw ladies with bogus trousers. Hey, you're welcome. Yes, you're welcome. I said, hey. Kai. Kerosene has fallen into this soup. A goodly preacher. So you don't know the, the, the discipline of righteousness. Hey. I couldn't stay there. Because my spirit will not align with that place. I love the man. I wanted to hear the man. But see the polluted environment. What preaching will you preach? How do you sun your cloth when there's rain falling? How do you, will it dry? How do you preach when the environment is polluted? Polluted. How do you do that? So, that is the situation. Let's cry. Is it nothing to you that pass by? When you see these pollutions in churches, yeah. Verse 16. Lamentation chapter 1, verse 12, verse 16. For these things I weep, mine are mine eye ran it down with water because the comforter that should comfort me that should relieve my soul is far from me my children are desolate because the enemy prevailed children desolate the enemy has prevailed all schools corrupted and yet the principals and and, and the, the proprietors of these schools are Christians. Elders in the church. They will not come to the school and impose righteousness on the people. At least in dressing. They will not do it. They are looking for money. They are looking for members. God has lost people. Righteousness has died. Is only the remnant, the remaining few, the remaining few that are surviving by the power of God. True saints in this generation are mourning for the fall of righteousness, for the fall of holiness of Christ. 
from ministers to members. Can't talk about holiness from ministers to members. All the same like father, like mother. Like father, like son. Like mother, like daughter. That is the situation now. Denominations have gone because of the competition they are making with each other. Who will carry the people? Leave my people, whether they are born again or not. They have blocked God from having access to their members because the glory of the king is in the multitude of his subjects. How are you coming to my members and you are preaching to them? Your members are not born again. Your members don't know the righteousness of God. Your members are not going to heaven. They say, no, leave them like that. Hey. Hey. Kai. Some churches are now saying, before the women take holy communion, they must wear earrings. No, that's a pro How many of you have heard this? It's a practical thing. You must wear earrings. If you don't wear earrings, no holy communion. No, you can't take it. In fact, to appoint somebody to be a pastor, the wife must wear earrings. The wife must wear earrings. Your wife is not wearing earrings, then you should suffer demotion. Because if you are not able to make your wife wear earrings, how will you pastor the church of God? You see how they turn the world upside down. You see how they turn it? Just to drive away God. To remove the glory of the Lord from the church. For these things I weep. My eye. My eye. Tears are falling from my eyes. Yes. Then, what is the Lord telling the, the remnant? The message of God to the remnant. What is the Lord saying? He said, it is you that are mine. You that keep yourselves from these pollutions. You are the ones that are mine. In Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. I read verse 16 to verse 18. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16 to 18. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared the Lord and that taught upon his name. And they shall be mine. And they shall be mine. See the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them. As a man spared his own son. That served him. Then shall ye return and discern. Between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that served God. And him that served him now. The Lord is saying. The other people are not serving him. It is this remnant that are crying against these people because of lack of righteousness. It is this remnant that are serving God. They're very few and they're sorrowful because of what their brothers are doing. Because of what their fathers are doing. Because of what others are doing in the society in the name of church. This remnant that are keeping to the truth, they are mine. The Lord will show it. He will show it. Even in this life, he will show that you are his own. Because you are keeping to this truth, the message of God, holiness, righteousness, you are keeping to it. All these trousers that these ladies are wearing, you are not doing it. The Lord says you are his own. This jewelry that they're doing, you're not doing it. The Lord said, you are his own. All this here, ungodly here do, palming, jericho, attachment, and we've won. 
You are not doing this thing. The Lord say you are his own. You who are not stealing money. Are not pursuing after money. You who are not faking it in ministry. You are standing in truth. You are not speaking lies. The Lord say you are his minister indeed. You are a jewel to him. He's encouraging you. My brethren, I'm telling you what is true. You might not have heard, but hear it from me. Hear and believe the Trinity visited Holiness Revival Movement come last Friday. Amen. Amen. Well, in the Bible study that is coming on Sunday, uh, this Sunday, we shall pl play the visitation of the Trinity. Three persons that look alike came wearing, they, they look alike, they're completely alike. They said they had come down for judgment. That just as they were, they came down for the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah because human beings are stubborn. They had come, all those people that are speaking against the anointed of the Lord, writing foolish things in the internet to cause me not to hear their chosen of the Lord. They have come to start the judgment. It's, he said, we shall hear. I'm telling you. There are many other things. But wait for Sunday. 4.30 on Sunday. Get connected. You will be surprised. How I, I am just thrilled up to today. And when they were going, the Lord not turned to me. Keep what you are doing. Keep on. Continue to do it. Don't be afraid. We are with you. Continue doing what you're doing. Don't fear anything. Don't fear anything. It is at the end because at first they didn't present themselves as divine personality. But if you listen to it's just that they would help me or they would help us from knowing that it is divine personality. If you listen to it, you will wonder why didn't you people know immediately that these are divine person, the trinity. Why didn't you know? But it is as they were going, the, what, the Lord not turned to me and said, I have visited you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thy throne, oh Lord, is forever. And ever the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thy throne, O oh Lord, is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness, righteousness, and hatest wickedness. Hallelujah. Therefore, Lord, thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above the fellows. Therefore, Lord thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. He said, maintain righteousness. Re resist sin as you are doing. Resist sin as you are doing. 
Do not allow sin. Do not allow sin into this camp. Maintain purity in the camp. Because it is the cleanliness that brought the law. It is the righteousness. As you yourself join in righteousness, your ministry will change. The presence of the Lord will involve, envelop you. You will see the Lord visiting you. But it's only for the remnant. So, God's comfort for them. Yes. Again, the Lord is saying in Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 to 11. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, this thing said he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that, that opened it, and no man shut it, and shut it, and no man opened it, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie, behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Can you hear the voice of God to the remnant? He knows your effort. He knows your very few. But he knows the labor you are making. He knows your effort, pastor. He knows your effort. How you cannot bear sin. How you are preaching against sin. How you can allow your church to diminish for righteousness sake. That those who don't love righteousness can go their way. The Lord is aware. And is telling you, be peaceful. Be peaceful. The God of heaven will open a door for your life. The revival that is coming to the world in this end time, you shall reap it. It is the revival of righteousness. It is the revival of holiness. And the Lord shall troop in the people to your ministry. He shall troop in the people to your church. Because you fear him. And the temptation that makes people fall. Because you have given yourself to righteousness, you will not fall. The Lord says he will not allow you to fall. Yes. That is what the Lord is saying. Day of the synagogue of Satan. All these people jumping up and down in iniquity. When the Lord enters among them in revival, you are the one to keep them. You will be the one to handle them. Therefore, stand still. Continue what you are doing. Continue to love the Lord. Again, the Lord is saying in Isaiah chapter 37, verse 31 and 32. Isaiah 37, verse 31 and 32. The Bible tells us here, saying, And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. They shall take root downward. They shall bear fruit upward. You shall take root downward. You shall bear fruit upward. You that have escaped the pollution of this life. You have escaped the pollution of this life. Pollution in life. Pollution in character. Pollution in worship. Pollution in dressing. Pollution in matters of money. Pollution evil spirits, going to evil spirits for power. You that have escaped, the remnant that have escaped from this corrupt world, the Lord says, I should tell you, you will grow root downward. He will pour strength upon your life. You will be strong. The strength of Elijah took him 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Mount Horeb. The Lord will pour strength that will take you unto the rapture. Until you the end of your life. You will never backslide. You will never fall. That is what the Lord is saying. And then you shall bear fruit upward. You remnant. 
the Lord shall continue to increase you. Amen. Who told you that righteousness shall die permanently? No. Righteousness shall blossom. Amen. The righteous shall blossom. Amen. Yes. That's the plan of God in our time. He has started it. He has started. He has started it. Just make sure you join righteousness. Holiness. You preach it. You believe it. You practice it. Make sure you do this. That's the voice of the Lord. That's the voice of the Lord. Again, the Lord is saying, the Lord is saying in Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 to verse 6. The Bible here is telling us, it said, endeavoring, chapter 4, verse 3 to 6, verse 3 to 6, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bone of peace. There is one body and one spirit There is one body and one spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. We have one church, the church of Christ, the body of Christ. We have one spirit that convicts to righteousness. That keeps us in the holiness of Christ. One spirit. We have one hope. Heaven. That we should be going to heaven. All of us have this hope. We have one Lord. Jesus Christ. Everybody say Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. One Lord. Then we have one faith. Talking about this, the doctrines of scripture. It's one. Why must we scatter? Let's come back to oneness. And then we have one baptism. The baptism refers to regeneration. Righteousness. Born again. New nature. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. If an Igbo man is in Christ, if a Yoruba man is in Christ, if a Hausa man is in Christ, if a, if a Ghanaian is in Christ, if a Cameroonian is in Christ, if an American is in Christ, if a European is in Christ, one. One. Those who are living other ways, they are not in Christ. So, and the Lord is saying, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. Let's come together. We are in this church to we, are, we have come here now to bring ourselves together. All these doctrines that are separating us will settle it now. Let's know which one is in error. Remove it. Don't be proud. We want to go to heaven. One heaven. Why should members of your church perish because you, don't, you are not giving them the truth? That is why we're here. And the Bible says, not forsaking the assembling of, of yourselves together. Who believe the same thing? Well, God wants us to believe the same thing. He wants us to practice the same thing. He wants us to teach the same thing. So, brethren, pastor, bishop, overseer, we have come here to be one. To understand that the Bible is one language. We should speak one language. May God give us the spirit of unity. Yeah. May God give us understanding. Yeah. May the church come together. Yeah. Oh Lord. You the Lord said prophesy to the bones in the valley. Son of man shall these bones live down nowhere. Son of man prophesy to the bones. They were very dry. The church is so scattered. But by the prophecy of the word of God, miracle will happen. Yeah. We shall come together. Yeah. We shall join together. Yeah. We shall become one church. Yeah. Preaching the something. Believing the something. Teaching the something. Practicing the something. 
And I prophesied as I was commanded. As I prophesied, there was a noise. And there was a shaking in the valley. Then I saw boon moving to boons. Hallelujah. Many churches that are not on truth shall dissolve their doctrines. Boon moving to the boons. And I saw a full skeleton. Everything hung correctly. Then I watched sinews, veins, when it started growing in these places to supply blood. Then as I watched, I saw flesh grew up on them and covered all the bones and the, everything covered. And I saw them lying like dead men. Son of man, prophesy to the four corners. Prophesy to the wind. And say, all wind come from the four corners of the earth. And breathe upon the slain. They are slain. The church slain by the devil. You will rise again. Yeah. I say you will rise again. Yeah. Prophesy upon the slain. I prophesied as I was commanded. For we all winds come from the four corners. And breathe upon the slain. As I prophesied. Hey, the, the wind came on them. And the breath came on them. And they all rushed up. They all rushed up and stood as a mighty army of God. You, a change is coming upon your life. You are going to do final exploit before you go in the rapture. In Jesus' name. Men and women, young and old, the spirit of God shall come upon you. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. The Lord shall bring us together into the unity of faith. And the power of God shall overshadow us. And we shall rise. We shall rise the end time army to do the final exploit over Satan, over the souls of sinners and prepare the earth, then the Lord shall come. Yes, he that cometh shall come. Even so come Lord Jesus. Rise up upon your feet and say, Lord, make us one. Lord, make us one. Unite us, the remnant that are left. The remnant that are left. The remnant that are left. The word of God to you. Come together. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. The remnant that are left. The Lord is with us. You will rise again with power by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. You will rise again with power by the Holy Ghost. The church of God shall be united. The Lord shall do it. Not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit, said the Lord, we shall be united. The Lord shall bring us together. He shall give us one heart. He shall give us one heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You will unite your church. You will unite your church. You will unite your church. To do final exploit for God before the rapture. 
before the rapture. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus' name we pray. Dry bones shall rise again. Dry bones shall rise again. Yes, Jehovah is able to I say your life shall rise again. I say your life shall rise again. Yes, Jehovah is able I say your life shall shine again. I say your life shall shine again. Oh yes, oh yes, Jehovah. I say your ministry shall grow again. I say your ministry shall grow again. Oh, yeah, Jehovah is able to do all things. I say the church shall come again. I say revival shall come again. I say revival shall come again. I say revival shall come to you. Brother, revival shall come on you. Sister, revival shall come on you. Oh, yes, oh, yes, Jehovah. Oh, yeah, Jehovah is able to do all things. Your life shall revive. Your life shall revive. Oh, yeah, Jehovah. He is able to do all things. I say the church shall revive. I say the church shall revive. Brother, the church shall revive. I say the church shall reunite. Oh, sister, the church shall reunite. Breathing the church shall reunite. Oh, yes, oh, yes, Jehovah. I say the church shall reunite. Brethren, the church shall reunite. 
sister that chose shall reunite. Brother that chose shall reunite. Children that chose shall reunite. Ah, pastor that chose shall reunite. Teacher that chose shall reunite. Evangelist that chose shall reunite. Amen. Amen. Jehovah is able to do all things. Amen. Jehovah is able to do all things. Amen. Raise up your hands. Yes. Revival must come. The church must reunite. Churches must reunite. In Jesus' name. Almighty Father, you have brought us for reu reunity. You have brought us for end time revival. Pour it upon your people. All those that are weakened by the devil, by these various temptations, the devil has stolen from them. The Lord has killed them. The devil is destroying them. Deliver them in Jesus' name. All pollutions that have entered into the church by their permission, today, grant them repentance in Jesus' name. Holiness upon the church. Holiness upon the denominations. Holiness upon the preachers. Holiness upon the members. Holiness upon the, the choir, Amen. upon the ushers, Amen. upon the elders, Amen. upon all the ministers, Amen. upon the children. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816 902 3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved hallelujah Jesus I believe in you you are my I believe in 
purchased me with your blood. You are my Lord and my Savior. You left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin. I believe in you, you are the living Savior. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. Oh, oh, oh. you are the living Savior. I believe in you, you are my Lord and Savior, I believe in you, you are the living Savior, you can Chased me with your blood. You are my Lord and my Savior. You left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin.
believe in you. You are the living Savior. Savior. Jesus, I believe.